Hello everyone and welcome to the next video on graphs. Uh, in this video, the focus will be on the topic of intercepts. Now on the question of uh, why intercepts, uh, well the reason that we draw graphs if you think about it is that we can get so much information from them uh, at a glance and uh, and amongst the important information that you can get from a graph uh, are the intercepts uh, usually in applications in actual problems uh, intercepts point to uh, some events of significance and we're going to see that uh, in the examples that will follow now on the question of what are intercepts uh, to begin with uh, so that we ac at least know what they are uh, before we can uh, use them in applications Let's take a look at the graph on the right side. Intercepts are points where the graph meets the axis. In the graph on the right side, there are three intercepts on the Q1 axis. These are this point, this one, and this one. We call them Q1 intercept. There is also one intercept on the Q2 axis. We refer to this point as the Q2 intercept. Now, not always do you have intercepts. You may have no intercepts. A graph may have uh, just one intercept. There may be multiple ones. And there could even be an infinite number of in, uh, intercepts. As examples, uh, this line, Q2 is equal to 2, which is a horizontal line here. Q2 is equal to 2, basically, no matter what Q1. This line has only one intercept, and that intercept is on the Q2 axis. There are no Q1 intercepts for this line. The circle here has no intercept. And of course you may have two intercepts as in this graph, one on each of the axes. And there could even be an infinite number of uh, intercepts. So as an example of that, you can imagine a wavy kind of a function that goes up and down and up and down and, and uh, it, it goes on forever on, in both directions, let's say. Uh, this kind of a graph, uh, which is uh, similar to a sine graph or uh, a cosine graph, uh, such graphs have an infinite number of um, intercepts. Okay, so now uh, how do we find intercepts? Uh, that's the next question. Uh, let's take a look at Q1 intercepts. And let's go back to the graph that we had here. So here we have three intercepts along the Q1 axis, on the Q1 axis. And uh, to find them, uh, what we notice is that uh, what's common to these three points is that their Q2 coordinate is zero. So for example, this point, this intercept, has a Q1 coordinate of negative one, and it has a Q2 coordinate of zero. This point, this intercept, has a Q1 value of one, and it has a Q2 value of zero. And for the third intercept here, Q1 is two, and again, Q2 is zero. So basically, for all of these points, Q2 has to be zero. And that means if in our equation, if we replace Q2 with zero, then we would find the points that are Q1 intercepts. And in a similar way, we can find Q2 intercepts by setting Q1 equal to zero. As an example in the same graph here, because a Q2 intercept is on a Q2 axis, its Q1 coordinate has to be zero. And therefore, if you replace Q1 with zero in your equation, you will find the Q2 intercepts. Now, as an example of how uh, this uh, works in applications, let's take a look at the following problem. 
we want to find the intercepts of t equals 273.15 plus lowercase t and discuss their significance in the context of the, of the problem. Uh, now, in, in the previous video, uh, I, I did discuss this formula. Uh, and if you recall, in this formula, capital T is temperature in kelvins, 273.15, which is usually written as T sub zero. Uh, but here I replace it with its, uh, with its actual value because uh, I want us to get some practice working with actual numbers. Uh, and then we have uh, the value is constant 273.15 and then we have plus lowercase t uh, and lowercase t measures the value of temperature in degrees celsius okay so this is what the uh, equation is about and uh, what we want to do is find the intercepts of this equation and then uh, talk about why is it that those intercepts are important uh, the uh, the graph of this uh, formula is here and I'm going to refer to it in, in a few minutes. But let's take a look at uh, how we can find the intercept. Uh, so for the uh, lowercase t intercept, that would be this point, capital T has to be zero. And therefore, for lowercase t intercept, we said capital T equal to zero. Now, uh, you can replace capital T with zero in the given formula, or you can uh, solve it first for the unknown, uh, lowercase t first, and then uh, replace capital T with zero. Uh, this second uh, sort of approach is, is uh, better, uh, and you should not shy away from having to rearrange equations. You should actually be good at uh, do, uh, doing this. Uh, so that's the approach that I will follow. Uh, we have capital T is equal to 273.15 plus lowercase t. Uh, let's switch sides. And then we take 273.15, which is being added to the right side and subtract. Now we have solved the formula for lowercase t. Now, again, for the T, lowercase t intercept, capital T has to be zero. So now we replace capital T with zero and simplify. And now we have our lowercase t intercept. It's the point negative 273.15 and zero. Uh, keep in mind that an intercept is a point, not a number. Uh, and therefore, you have to give the coordinates for both Q1 and Q2 in this case for lowercase t and capital T. Now in terms of its significance, this is the coldest possible temperature. I did uh, discuss temperature briefly in an earlier video and I refer you to that uh, to, get, uh, to get the background. Uh, but we did discuss that uh, at least for gases, for simple systems, uh, the ordinary temperature is a measure of how fast the molecules of a given uh, gas move around and about. Uh, and uh, the coldest possible temperature is when these molecules stop. And that happens at negative 273.15 degrees Celsius or zero Kelvin. Okay, so this was the lowercase t intercept and it, it appears here. It actually is the end of the domain for this problem. Now let's take a look at the other intercept, capital T intercept. For the capital T intercept, we set lowercase t equal to zero in the, in the equation. Now in this case, the equation has been solved for capital T, so all we have to do is replace lowercase t with zero, simplify, and now we have our intercept. The capital T intercept is zero, 273.15. Now uh, zero, again, at the intercept is a point, so you should give us both coordinates for that point. It's not a number. Uh, uh, 273.15 here is not the intercept. This is the intercept. The point with coordinates 0 and 273.15. The significance of this intercept is that this is the temperature at which water freezes under standard conditions, of course. So you can see that the intercepts are uh, almost always uh, point to uh, some kind of significance, some kind of event happening. Uh, and uh, for that reason, uh, if you're graphing uh, with any graph, basically, you should always pay attention to the intercepts and try to figure out what they represent. Now, if you're graphing a straight line, if you know by, if you can tell by looking at a formula that this graph is a straight line, uh, if it's a linear equation, then all you need is two points for a straight line. For a curve, you need many points. Uh, so intercepts by themselves will not help you draw a curve. 
But for a straight line, uh, if you have any two points, uh, you can draw uh, the, the line through those two points. Uh, and uh, and for, that, uh, for the reason that intercepts are usually important, what people do is if they want to draw a line using two points, uh, they use the intercept. Uh, of course, there may be the case when there is one intercept, uh, like uh, a line going through, let's say, 0, 0. We saw an example of that uh, earlier. Let's see if we can go back to it. Oh, well, I have it here. Uh, so this line, for example, goes through 0, 0. And, uh, and the issue is that uh, there is only one intercept, and you cannot really figure out how to draw a line uh, through one point. Uh, through one point, you can draw many lines. You can go from here to here, let's say, uh, or you can even go down this way. Uh, but if you have two points, uh, then you can draw your line. Even in this case, people would find the intercept, the one intercept, and then they would find one other point, uh, maybe at x equals to uh, 4, and, uh, or uh, in this case, m equals 4 or 6, and they find another point, and then they connect them. Okay, so this is the uh, temperature kind of uh, relationship. Now, uh, let's take a look at one more problem before we end this video. And actually, you should try this problem. You know what? I'll do one of the intercepts, and you do the other one. Uh, so here we have the problem from, uh, again, an earlier video uh, where we were talking about a tank that has a volume of 12 liters and it's full of water. And we are removing 2 liters per hour uh, from the tank. And uh, of course that makes it for a toy tank, of, uh, I, I guess, uh, with a toy pump. Uh, but anyways, uh, total volume is 12 liters and we can only remove 2 liters per hour from, from this tank. Uh, and we want to discuss the significance of the intercepts once we find them uh, for this particular problem. The graph for this was given in an earlier video, and here it is, uh, with a domain starting at zero, going to six hours. At zero hours, uh, we have 12 liters in the tank, and then we start to remove two liters every hour. One hour, two liters down. Another hour, two liters down. And so on and so forth until we get to uh, between five and six hours. And then uh, once we are at five hours and we, we go by one more hour, uh, we get to zero for the volume. And at that point, all the water has been removed, of course, from the tank. Okay, so let's find the intercept. Now, we are assuming that we don't have the graph right now. Uh, so let's find the intercept. For the lowercase t intercept, of course, uh, we set uh, capital V equal to zero in the formula. So in the formula, we have V is equal to 12 minus 2t. Let's solve for the unknown. So I'm going to take subtraction of 2t, move it to the left, and make it addition by 2t. And then I move v to the right side and turn addition by v into subtraction by v. And we get 2t is equal to 12 minus v. Now we, ha we still have to solve for t. Uh, and so we can write down either uh, t is equal to 12 minus v divided by 2. So multiplication by 2 turns into division by 2. Or we can talk about half of 12 minus v. Uh, I have discussed again in an earlier video the equivalence between these two ways of uh, doing division, and uh, you should actually be familiar with them. One of them says divide by 2, and the other one says half of, and these are uh, sort of equivalent, even based on the way they, they sound. Okay, we have solved the equation for lowercase t, and now we replace v with 0 uh, to find out uh, what the intercept is. And after we do that and we simplify, we end up with t is equal to 6 hours. And this means that the uh, t-intercept is at 6, 0. And the significance of, uh, uh, the significance of this point uh, is that, uh, uh, is that that's the point uh, when we have uh, maximum amount of water in the tank, uh, just the point when we started to uh, pump water out of the tank. OK, now for the next one, for the, for the capital V-intercept, you should pause the video and try it yourself. And then look at my solution. OK, everyone, thank you very much for watching this video. In the next video, I will talk about another uh, concept of importance when we uh, deal with graphs. And this is the concept of slope. Take care and see you soon.